Hello everybody, welcome to Lose Reviews. In this episode, we're taking a look at the fifth and possibly the final, I really don't care at this moment, of Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man Tale No Tales. No, 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 okay, it's just crushing my brain. Ah, okay. So, is it bad? It's bad. It's bad? It's really red. Like, we'll be back in a second. It's really red. So yes, this is uh, this is the fifth, possibly the final one, but I really I really don't know uh, at this point. And I do know that Marvel Cinematic Movies, of course, and Disney, it's all you know correlated. But the whole formula with having end after credits, Pirates of the Caribbean was one of the first ones to do it. Because you know, at the end of the first movie, spoiler alert, Barbosa's corpse was uh, lying in the treasure, and then the monkey comes by. You know, after credit stuff. And I think all of the movies, including the last one, they do have after credits. Spoiler alert! It's Disney. Yeah, I don't know. It just, uh, it's, it is kind of like beating a dead horse. But with this movie, though, it was a lot more fun than the last two movies. And usually I give this sort of disclaimer. I don't reveal too much. I don't spoil too much. But I, I, I'm going to have to say minor spoilers? So there's a weird timeline that's happening in this movie. It's five years after the fourth movie with Blackbeard, but like nine years after something in the timeline. Why? Because we're dealing with a 21-year-old Henry Turner. Yeah, it's Will Turner's son. This is what the movie's about. It's about his kid. They did show him in the trailer, you know, with, with uh, the dead pirate telling you, have you seen Captain Jack Sparrow? Death comes for him. Death. Please, can you tell him that for me? Please. Yeah, um, in that trailer, that was that was uh, Will Turner's kid uh, reprising his role, Orlando Bloom. So for this movie, compared to the last three movies with uh, At World's End, yeah, with Blackbeard, I forgot what the Stranger Tides, I think. Man, it just felt like they were trying too hard. But I learned going into this movie, filmmakers of this movie wanted to get the tone back from the first one, where, you know, when they had all the skeletons. And yeah, something about this movie, this fifth movie, they felt like they're getting, they're, they went back to their, their roots. And it kind of shows and you feel it. The movie is more fun. Jack Sparrow is just great to see on screen. Everything he does is funny and I enjoyed myself. So going back to the son of Will Turner, Henry, he is trying to help out his father who, Orlando Bloom, where we last saw him, is captain of the Flying Dutchman. But I think the curse is that he can only step on land every 10 years. His son is trying to help him out. Don't you see a curse to this ship? That's why I'm here. I think you know a way to break your curse. And his story intertwines with another new character named Karina, who is a horologist. <gasps> <laughs> Horologist is basically the study of the stars. I'm a woman of science. I choose not to believe in ghosts. And then there's Jack Sparrow. Where does he fit in all this? So Jack from the last movie, he has the black pearl, but he keeps it in that bottle. I don't know if you've seen it, but he that's where the pearl is. It's in his breast pocket. It was some weird curse that Blackbeard did and he put, you know, you ever have those bottles and the, the ships in there? Yeah, that's what they basically did to the black pearl and a whole bunch of ships, but Jack's got the black pearl in his pocket and he has no way of getting his ship back. But what is he doing? He's still living the life of a savvy pirate. Pirate's life. There ain't no you know what? Maybe it's just maybe it's because he's more drunk in this movie. He's able to do two things at once. Sleep and be drunk. What a guy. Multitasker. Remember there was a period of time when you could put Johnny Depp in about everything and it'll make money, but <laughs> lately it just hasn't been going that well. More guy. The Lone Ranger was just uh, and then the whole Alice in Wonderland, Alice through the looking glass. Yeah, so so. But here, like I said, as the filmmakers were going back to their roots, Jack Sparrow is back and he's he's funny as ever and he's in, he's a joy to watch. And Barbosa is back. He was someone that was a bit of a low-key character. He was the main villain in the first one, but they brought him back and he's great to have around. There's just something about him. It just has that uh, extra oomph to the movie. I have heard stories of a mighty Spanish captain who hunted and killed thousands of men. I think it's because you have Captain Jack and then you have him butting heads about how to be a captain of a ship and it's entertaining to watch even now in this movie. So everybody is after something called the staff? No, the trident. The trident of Poseidon. And apparently this has the power to nullify all curses in the sea. I read about a treasure. A treasure that holds all the power of the sea. The trident of Poseidon can break your curse. And what, what does Jack Sparrow have to do with it? He has a damn compass. So he just has the compass, like, oh, we're gonna find this thing. Oh, the compass. And then you have the horologist, because <gasps> she could read the stars. The only way to find this thing is she, you have to navigate Pisces and Aries and all of them up in the stars to, to find the tribe. Oh, pirates, they're stupid. 
Yes. Yes, yes, yes. But the main villain in the movie, you've seen him in Skyfall, you've seen him, I think he did a terrific job, No Country for Old Men, Javier Bardem. And uh, you know, it's not as, as good as Davy Jones or the Skeletons group coming up with the, some ideas to have haunted crews with this one. I thought they, you know, I was half expecting them to pull something out of the butt to be very desperate, but this wasn't the best out of all the villains I've seen in the series, but I did enjoy these guys. They were creepy, they were scary. I wouldn't want to mess with these guys. They're haunted. But long story short, or nothing too complicated. He's a vengeful spirit that has a grudge against Jack Sparrow. Jack Sparrow! And what's kind of cool is you do learn a little bit about how Jack got his name. So going into this movie, they keep saying that they were going to make two trilogies of Fifth of the Six, but they wanted to make this the final movie. If this was the final movie, they did tie up a lot of things very, very well. A lot of family ties, a lot of family issues. Jack's story technically doesn't really end. He's always going to live the life of a pirate, but some of the things that we knew from past characters and what who they are now really comes full circle here. But again, it was I'm pretty sure it was Curse of the Black Pearl before Marvel Cinematic Movies were doing this. After credits, man, they're always it made a lot of money. This movie made a lot of money and they're wanting more, but again, as much as I like these movies, if this was the final, make this the final movie. But if they do want more, you know, worth a shot, I guess? Heck, I enjoyed it more than I, I thought I would. It was great to see Jack back. He wasn't trying really, really hard to entertain you or wonder you with pirate scenes and, and action sequences. It was very entertaining. Special effects were great. But, you know, if I were to wrap this movie up, a uh, solid three out of five dead monkeys. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this trailer. Look down. Like, subscribe, you'll be good to go. Check out my other videos, and I'll see you next time. Bye.